The hives, treasure houses of a bush colony of bees, are crammed with honey and ready for man to rob. The bees have made millions of journeys to add to that precious store. To be or not to be? To be it is. The apiarist opens his attack on a hive with a heavy smoke screen. That's the worst of cheap tobacco. The bees rush for the fresh air. There's a scramble to escort the queen bee home. There she is, ninth from the left in the 32nd row from the top. The frames upon which the bees have patiently built their combs are removed from the hive. The few bees left are non-unionists. They work any old time. Not every frame is taken from the hive. One is left in each to feed the busy little toilers through the long winter months. The honeycomb, its cells full of honey, is uncapped by the use of a steam-heated knife. This melts and shears away the outside layer of wax, revealing the golden yield. To produce this honey, thousands of bees have toiled through many sunny hours, impelled by that communal instinct which is the wonder of naturalists. In the extractor, the last of the bees' wax is removed, and the honey is ready to be strained and then sent to market. It carries with it the delicate fragrance of the bush flowers. Back at the hive, they're holding a protest meeting. The air is full of stinging remarks. Here's somebody else with a bee in his bonnet. He handles the swarm wearing neither veil nor gloves. He's immune because he's got blue blood in his veins. He was stung by a queen bee. All he complains of is a buzzing in his ears. The apiarist handles the bees with the confidence of long practice. He's just a humble hero of the beekeeping business. <laughs> 